Hi everyone, welcome to this new installment of Cortex tutorial videos. In today's hands-on session on low-level control, we will use what we learned in the last video to try and implement a very simple collision detection algorithm. But first, as usual, let's start by taking a look at our header file. So, we learned in the last video that to do low-level control, we need to implement real-time clients, including a UDP client, but also a real-time router client and real-time session manager and also implement cyclic client and get the actuator feedback, which is the main structure used in the cyclic. So those are all new members for our Cortex robot object. All these members will need to be initialized in our initialize function, as well as deleted in our disconnect function. In addition to this, I'm also adding a block of new getters here so we have access to the number of degrees of freedom. This is not new. It's just that we're going to need it for our implementation later. And then we can get the feedback from the robot, get the feedback from one specific actuator, get the Cartesian feedback, or get the joint feedback, any part that we're interested in. In addition to this, we also will use the refresh feedback function, as well as this new set custom data function that will allow us to store data for comparison for our implementation. Finally, I'm also adding a on refresh feedback callback that we will use whenever we call the refresh feedback function. Let's have a look at how all of these are initialized. As you can see, I already did the implementation of the initialization because it's really similar to what we've done in the previous video. The only difference here is all the clients we are instantiating are stored into member variables from our class. So first, we're creating a transport client UDP and using it to instantiate a router client real time that uses the same error callback as our regular router client. Then we connect the UDP client to the same IP address, except now we're using the port 10001, that is the port real time on the robot. After that, we create a session manager real time which is just a regular session manager, but that is instantiated by taking a router client real time as a parameter. We can use that session manager to create a session with the same session info we used earlier. And finally, we can create a new basic click client connected to the router client real time. And that's it. As you can see, this is really similar to what we had already here for the regular connection. To dispose of all of those clients, as you can see, it can be done in the exact same manner as all of the previous clients we instantiated before. Now let's move on to the actually interesting part. So we have a bunch of getters here. The first one gets the number of degree of freedom. We simply return the member degree of freedom. The second one gets the feedback. We're returning the member feedback. We'll see a bit later how we're filling this in. But let's see, let's start with the implementation with get actuator feedback. So the first thing you want to check is whether or not you have an actuator that corresponds to the actuator index that is fetched. So first let's validate that. So if the actuator index is larger or equal than the number of degree of freedom. Then we cannot really return false here because since this is a getter, we have to return a structure. So let's return an empty structure. Basic click, actuator feedback, an empty one. And otherwise, what we can do is simply access the feedback object and then return the actuators actuators from the given index. And that's it. Now we can follow up with all the other getters. If we want to get the Cartesian pose, what we have to do is first check if the robot is connected. So if the robot is not connected, we can return an empty pose. 
otherwise, we can get the base feedback here. So Canova API base cyclic base feedback. The base feedback is a structure that contains all the Cartesian information. So let's just call this BF. It's equal to our feedback structure dot base. And now all we have to do is fetch all the information from that structure and put it in our pose. So we can do pose dot set x of bf dot tool pose x like this. Copy this three times. Change for y and z. And we're done with the position. Then we can do pose dot set theta x with bf dot tool pose theta x like this. Copy this th three more times. Oh, let's fix this here x, y, z, x, y, z. And that's it. As you can imagine, the Cartesian getters are really similar to this one. So let's just take all of this and copy it down here for the twist. Now, instead of the pose, we will want to use the twist here. And now we, all we have to do is make adjustments because the twist structure is not named in the same way as the pose structure is. So now instead we'll be using set linear x and instead of using tool pose x, we'll be using tool twist linear x. So let's replace those two here with two copies here for y and z, y and z again. And instead of theta x, we use set angular x. So to twist angular x like this. And we can delete those two. Copy the two here. And we're done with the twist. We can take this entire thing again and do it again for the wrench. So now wrench, wrench, wrench everywhere. And the wrench is also a different structure. So now we're using set force x here. So the tool is tool force, tool external force x here. We can copy that twice. Replacing these lines. And once again, replacing with Y and Z. With Y and Z. Uh, oops, sorry. So Y and Z here. Now for the torque, basically we just call set torque X. And we can copy this here, bf dot tool external wrench torque x here. We can replace these three lines with copies of this one. Replacing one last time with y and z everywhere.
And we're done with the implementation of our Cartesian getters. So let's move on to our getters for the joint information. So as usual, let's first start by checking if the robot is connected. So if the robot is not connected, like previously, since this is a getter, we cannot just return false. So we return an empty structure. Otherwise, all we have to do is loop through all of the actuators and return their positions. So for Let's declare an integer here with the index equals zero. Index must be smaller than the number of degrees of freedom. Index plus plus. And all we have to do is positions dot push back. And the information is coming from the feedback from an actuator of index, index, and then we ask for the position. As you can imagine, the implementation of the getters for the velocities and joint torques will be very similar. So once again, let's just copy this here to there. Instead, we'll be using velocities and instead of asking for the actuator position, we'll ask for the actuator velocity. One last time for torques. Copy everything. Paste it here. We're using torques instead of velocities. And here we replace with torque. While we're here, let's just take a look at our set custom data function I made. So this will allow us to set a vector of float and save it inside of our robot object. So I'm expecting the number of float to be equal to the number of degree of freedom. And if that's the case, then I'm setting my data inside the custom data variable. Now, all the getters that we just implemented assume that we received the feedback from the robot. So let's go and take care of that. So robot and refresh feedback. First thing, as usual, let's check if the robot is connected. And if it's not connected, this is not a getter, so we can return false. Otherwise, we can try the following. First, let's declare a lambda function. So a lambda function for a callback. It's declared like this. So if you don't remember how to use asynchronous function calls, you can just take a look at the asynchronous function call videos. To declare our Lambda function, we will take as parameters const Canova API error and a reference to an error, as well as a const Canova API basic click feedback containing our data. What we want to do with this function is simply call the method from our class that we called on refresh feedback callback with the error and the data. Finally, we can use our cyclic client so base to click and call refresh feedback callback with our lambda function callback. If there's an error, we can catch it as usual using the same method. So Canova API k okay, detailed exception a reference to an exception. And we can call on error of our exception and return false. Moving on to the implementation of our callback. So the first thing we do is we store the feedback returned by the robot and we store it inside the feedback variable. This is all that's necessary to get our getters working. 
However, for the purpose of this example, let's also include our collision detection algorithm here. So what we will be implementing is a really simple collision detection that works when the robot is static. So what we will do is we will compare the current value of the torques measured on all the actuators of the robot and compare them to a reference, which will be the custom data that we will save at the beginning of our program. So to do this first, we can implement an STD vector float containing the torques. And for that, we can use the getter we built earlier. So get joint torques. And if our custom data is not empty, custom data is not empty, then we can proceed with the comparison. So for every actuator, so let's make a loop. So for integer i equals zero, i smaller than the number of degrees of freedom, i plus plus, if the absolute value of the torque we're measuring minus the torque we registered in the custom data for each actuator is larger than, let's say, 0 0.5 Newton meters. What we can do is simply print out collision detected. And once we've detected the collision on one actuator, we don't need to look at the others. So to avoid printing a bunch of times, we can just break here. If you wish to have a collision detection algorithm working uh, while the robot is not static, you will also need to include inside your measurement, in addition to the original position of the robot, you will need to replace that uh, custom data here with the torques given by the gravity model of the robot, as well as the dynamic torque used for the motion of the robot. You can compute those using uh, open source libraries. Now that we're done implementing all the methods in our class, let's test them with our example script. So first, we can call robot.refreshFeedback to get the feedback from the robot. To make sure that the return value has arrived, let's first sleep. So std this thread sleep for std chrono milliseconds. So let's sleep for 500 milliseconds. Now that we know that the value is here, we can use std vector float join torques and use our rope our getter from the robot to get the join torques get join torques now we can set our custom data to this value so set custom data to our join torques Just in case something bad happened, let's put that into a condition. So if this failed, we can print custom data as an invalid size. This will happen in case we're sending the wrong number of joint torques compared to the number of degree of freedom of the robot. After that, we can fetch the other joint information, so another std vector of floats containing the joint velocities, and use the robot dot get joint velocities, and 
Oh, and final one for positions. So vector float joint positions equals robot dot get joint positions. Just to validate that everything worked properly, we can loop through the actuators. So for and i equals zero, i is smaller than robot dot get number of degrees of freedom. This is why I was implementing this getter earlier. I plus plus. So we can print the information we just add. So for, for joint I, we can print the position which should be from joint positions, position high. Then we can print velocity from the joint velocity. Oh, let's add spaces here so it's readable. Velocity from joint velocities i and torques from joint torques of i and finished up with end line. Now we can fetch the Cartesian information. We mentioned this in the earlier video, but remember that the Cartesian information is only updated on the robot when you are in single level servoing mode. It's not available when you're in low level control mode. So we can get our pose by using pose equal robot dot get Cartesian pose. We can get our twist like this as well. Robot dot get Cartesian twist. And wrench robot dot get cartesian wrench just to validate that it works let's print out some stuff again so stdc out so pose dot x let's add a tab now let's use twist dot linear y another tab and wrench dot let's say let's to torque z like this std and line so this here tests most of the getters we just implemented now, if we want to test the collision detection, we will need some additional time and we will need to constantly poll the robot to refresh the feedback. So first, let's just give us a signal telling us that the collision detection has started. So see out start collision detection. Let's give ourselves a duration in millisecond of let's say 15 seconds, so 15,000, a an initial time in millisecond of zero, and a time step, time step still in milliseconds of 100. Now what we can do is do a while loop while the time is smaller than the duration. What we can do is robot.refresh feedback and then sleep this thread, sleep for chrono milliseconds from our time step.
n increments are time plus equal time step ms. And that should be it for our script. Let me now build this off screen and let's see how it behaves. So I'm done building the program. Let's start. Let's see how it behaves. So first we're connecting, then we have all the joint information as well as the Cartesian information. The collision detection is launched. As you can see, when I hit the robot, the collision is detected. I know there is some lag introduced by my recruiting device, but hopefully you'll trust that this detection is instant. That's all for today's hands-on session on the low-level API. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified when our next tutorial video is released. Good luck with your robotic applications and see you next time.